Ten seconds. Yes, of luck. Let's do a duck check. Six. Five. Go to black. Four. Three. Oh. You need cellulube. Hey there, Pizza Hut. Uh, yes, I'd like to order a pizza with one. Sausage! Oh, Kermit! Pepperoni! Pepperoni! Cheese! I need pepperoni on mine! Pepperoni! 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 Pepperoni!
something. Follow me. <laughs> Quick, up there. Make way. Uh, Come on through. Uh, hmm. Oh. 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 Damn it. Oh, what happened? Orson fall down? Shut up. I believe I slipped my disc. <laughs> It was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. Yeah, I don't know, fellers and stellers. I think we're on a goose chase. No way! My cousin Derek swore there was a secret game room somewhere in this school. Does anybody else sense a foreshadowing in this episode? Because I'm starting to get that sense vibe. We've checked every hallway from here to the boiler room. You know, when you say you're going into the boiler room, it reminds me so much of a new me called Nightmare on Elm Street. Hey guys, over here, check this out. <laughs> Looks like a studio. In the studio, studio. I can't wait to go back to Grand Rapids in that studio again to sell my full story. Well, hash my browns. I knew it. This is where they experiment on kids. I swear to fuck, it feels like Zach's parents are actually born in the laboratory. So glad my parents aren't like them. No, Zach. This is clearly an old news studio. The school must have had a show or something. I mean, if I can't wait till I'm done being the Loud House critic and I can start doing my own talk show with autistic people, and I will still do a couple of more movie reviews if people can start watching those instead of watching Loud House. Check out the vintage news cuties. Dude, gross. That's my mom. And, and is that so bad? Hi, Rom. <sighs> wow. You are barking up the wrong tree, little sis. He used to puppy seat you. And that's... bad. <laughs> well, yeah. Your mom was part of a news crew? Looking like that? Son of a... Bitch! It's me. I just had a sublime vision. And what might that be, Captain Hook? We could be the next news team! So fun! And it would be a great way for us to spend more time together at school! Sounds like a better idea, other than that idea how they handled it in school, or friends in dry places. There's just something about those eyes of hers. Dude! What? You should take it as a compliment. Something's wrong with Rusty. I mean, really, he should stop thinking about what kind of sexy things he wants to do to Zack's mom. Rusty, get your mind out of the gutter. Don't make me get the hose. If you ask me, that woman looks like a total boner killer. Hey, Meryl! Meryl! We're coming! Hey, Meryl! Uh, maybe we were in a blind spot. Meryl! Yoo-hoo, Meryl! <laughs> What's that butt's problem? Why the hell would she be watching that in school in first place? If the kids gotta talk to you, you better sit up and pay attention. You got a big fat butt. Oh, she's watching that soap opera, Southern Hospitality. Jackson just came back from the dead, only to find his long lost fiance had fallen into a coma. Somebody get me out of here before I shoot this fucking kid. Can anyone remind us why Clyde is even part of this group again? Oof, can a girl get some quiet around here? <laughs> okay. Now what do y'all noisy little jitterbugs need? But hurry, my show's back from commercial in 30 seconds. Could you at least put that damn thing away? Every staff and teacher is supposed to be 100% focused on the job. But with Coach Patowski doing his little thing, I don't know what to think of that. Oh, we found an old news set. It was pretty cool. Rusty dented the camera when he dropped it. Why would you tell her that? We need to talk to Principal Ramirez. It's urgent. Do we have to talk to the Principal Ramirez? Hell, you might as well be talking with Mr. Bullhoffner instead. The Grinch? And that's why we are absolutely perfect to restart the news show. Oh, thank you. Well, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but there's a reason we ended that news show. Nobody watched it. The Daily Marsupial called it a punishment worse than detention. Yeah, I got three good reasons about why the show failed. Zack's mom, alien freak weirdo, and uh, fuck it, I forgot what I was going to say for the third one. 
point is, she was the one who messed up the entire career of that show. But our show could be different. I have news experience. Lord have mercy, don't even remind us of that episode. That episode tormented me. Hmm, what do you think, Sarabi? Well... Please. Uh, no, let me do that again. <coughs> please, please. Please give us a chance. We already practiced our action news team pose. <laughs> uh, that bus was an antique, right? Also, cool poses, guys. It reminds me of the Power Rangers and the Ginyu Force from Dragon Ball Z. Come on, Linky, you gotta be more energetic than that. Kind of like this. Good morning! I'm Lincoln Lap. And I'm Clyde Bright. And Kangaroos, this is your news. Mr. Ballhopner's birthday. We've got reporter Stella Zhao live on the scene. That's right, Clyde. I'm here with the birthday boy. Mr. B, how does it feel to turn 62? I'm 34. <laughs> Survey says... Think of all you've accomplished in 38 years. I'm 25. Uh -huh. I don't know how I feel about champagne corks. That could have hit me in the eye. I don't know why I found that funny, but somewhat... It just made me have a little chuckle about it. Anyways... Hmm, happy birthday to you, too. He can give lessons to the Grinch. Now Rusty spokes with sports. Rusty, you're live. <laughs> I'm here with the soccer team's captain, Lin Loud. Ugh, Rusty, we're trying to practice here. Survey says... Hornet of all! Hornet of all! Captain? about today's game against Hazel Tucky. More like Hazel Lucky if they score a goal. Well, at least she's telling it like it is. I'm not exactly so sure how she would do around with Stella, but I know she's really cool with Liam. Don't move. I need to run a few drills. That's today's sports news. Licking a Clyde, back to all. We don't have Stormtrooper eyesight. Dang it, Lynn. Aim for the net, not Rusty. And I pray like hell that she would actually be so much nice with Stella. Kicking it with Lynn Loud is definitely not a goal of mine. Ha 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 ha. Real funny, Luann. I'm so rolling in my grave right now. Let's check back in with Stella, who's learning how to whip up that famous cafeteria one bean chili. I'm here with Chef Pat. I don't know about you, but how the way Chef Pat actually looks, she looks like something from the Goomba world. Looks like a total monster abomination. Are you trying to go for the Goomba Award and making something that looks like something not look like something? <sighs> and together, we're cooking up some trouble. Is that a shoe? <gasps> See, this is why you should always stay clear of the cafeteria food at school, except for pizza. You can never go wrong with pizza. Dear God. Don't let this bowl of chili taste like a shoe like it did last week. Oh, that's the news for today. From all of us here at Action News, have a happy day, kangaroos. <laughs>
Wait a minute, what about the weather? They always put the weather on the news. Now in a state of emergency, this is exactly what California is bracing for. The brunt of a new winter storm forecasted to be potentially more powerful than the system that triggered daring rescues, widespread flooding, and washed out roads. We need the rain, but we don't need it all at once. After spending days underwater, 33 million are under flood watches tonight. Bay Area cities on high alert. Cut, Trent, check the gate, moving on. I think we nailed it! Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to hear what everyone thought about our first episode! Every well, we're about four minutes into the episode. I have a point that something's gonna go downhill with their first episode. Otherwise, this episode wouldn't be called Colonel of Truth for nothing. Everyone hated your first episode. What?! Sorry, I'm going to have to cancel the show. What?! How's that possible?! Oh, oh, yeah. what? What? What do you mean? Your action news had no action and no news. No one found it interesting except for Mr. Bolhoffner, who is suing the school. Survey says... Ah, should have seen that come. Captain. Yeah, there it is. Sheesh, tough crowd. Also, of course, Bullhofter is suing the school. Why does that not surprise me? This is some old bullshit. Which I wouldn't be too damn surprised if they had David Alec Lear voicing damn backside. Well, what if we can change that? What if we can come up with a really great story that will hook people? All right, I'll give you 24 hours. Great job, guys. Sure, the news was pretty boring, but you guys gave it a lot of energy and had a lot of fun. So I give your first episode a solid 7 out of 10. All right, shut your assholes. Here's how we're going to do this shit. I got the story. We investigate undercover aliens posing as teachers at our school. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. You know, you and your family should be writing a book right now. How to not get anal pro by aliens. Unless... You want to be a homo? Still a no, Zach. Okay, you'll be sorry when Mr. Guggenheimer starts his invasion. Survey says... Suck a dick, dumb shit! Do you not know that sucking my dick is a serious offense? Punishable by fuck you! Wait, that's not right. We need to have a talk. When we get home, all the things that are wrong with that statement, but first... I'm back with the snacks! But don't hate, the vending machine and the cafeteria both slot out of popcorn again! Which is weird, because it's supposed to be restocked every morning. That is weird. Is there something strange in your neighborhood? Who are you gonna call? If there's something weird and it doesn't look good, who are they gonna call? Who could be snapping up all the popcorn before anyone else can get to it? Guys, this could be the story we need to save our show. All right! You know, it's oddly amazing how there are so many people that are actually still working on a cartoon show or an actual sitcom show, and so much the ratings are dropping down like flies. And they're always trying to continue their bullshit work because they think they can try and save the show to try and change everything. That shit ain't gonna be good enough for The Simpsons. It's not gonna be good enough for Fairly Odd Parents. It's not gonna be good enough for SpongeBob SquarePants. It's not gonna be good enough for Family Guy either. And probably sure as hell it won't be good enough to save this show either. Or the damn live action series. And I'm gonna pray like fucking hell that that new Velma show will actually be done after season two. Cause I gotta tell you, that show's got a lot of fucking hate on it. <laughs> Start recording! Bet you a half dollar you guys can't tell me who that is, because I gotta tell you something, I already know who the fuck that really is. It's not that fucking obvious to even tell. And it sure as hell ain't Chandler. Oh, you got a big ass! Let's go! Make way! I got him! And he smells terrible! Good job, Rust! Caught trash! And that's really heroic of you, Cat. I mean, I could do better than that if my dick wasn't too hard. Let's just get back to the principal before I start thinking about Kelly again. Now this is a news story! But who's the culprit? Um, we don't know yet, but we're really close. A neglected housewife? Colombian drug runners? Some retard snowman? 
someone swiping popcorn from the vending machines doesn't sound all that interesting if you ask me but but i guess we have no other choice well now i gotta see how this turns out i'll give you the rest of the week to crack it yes you can count on the action news team <laughs> just get out Go, go, action news team. Go, go, action news team. <laughs> she may be a dumb, bland principal, but I gotta admit, that one line was just funny. Wait a minute, there's something I actually didn't even notice about this. Why the hell is Cheryl actually here? Shouldn't she be at the elementary school? And don't worry, there's another episode along the way that I still haven't quite reviewed yet, but I'm gonna review it soon enough that sounds even more confusing. There's the driver, right on time! Ah! Ah! <clears throat> Sorry. What the fuck? Is that Zack? Zack, you've been there the whole time? We thought you overslept. It's called camouflage, Rusty. Wow, awesome camouflage, Zack. But I will say, it's a good thing you showed yourself before any dogs or vegetarians showed up. What do you, why do I mean vegetarians? Look up that one episode of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy and you'll know what I mean. Looks like one of those bush ass trees that I've seen in a spiral game looks with the Lorax ass hair wearing glasses. Shit, that might as well be his Halloween costume. Hey y'all, where the heck's the popcorn culprit? Guess he's a no-show. At least we can still talk to the driver. That's really weird of Zag hopping in a bush like that. By the way, if you listen closely to this music, you can hear a bit of Indiana Jones theme in it. Just listen. Action News Team, do you have anything to say about the popcorn situation? <laughs> Cece, can't Zach just run in that fucking bush? This isn't Looney Tunes. About. Today's my first day. Uh, the last guy got transferred to Indianapolis. <gasps> Popcorn Perp must have arranged it. He must be on to us. Wait, but why did you run from us? You see a weird looking bush coming at you. Your instincts tell you to run. No, for me, if I ever saw a walking bush coming right at me, hairspray and a lighter is all I need. What are you doing? Like fire, hellfire. This fire in my skin. Well, what do we do now? We need to find a way to lure the culprit out of hiding. I've got a plan. Zach, we're gonna need your tracker and Clyde's spice kit. Zach with a tracker? Shit, I thought that'd be Lisa's sick idea of fun. If the culprit likes popcorn, there's no way he'll be able to resist Clyde's famous rosemary parm corn. That sounds like an interesting taste on the popcorn flavor. There's so many different seasonings you can actually sprinkle onto the popcorn. But whatever you do, don't use salt and vinegar. <laughs> I just pray like hell that nobody actually eats the tracker. Okay guys, we'll take turns watching the tracker. Settle in. This could be a while. It's your silly riddle. Pretty, quite a bit. Silly, silly, silly. This is the stupidest tea party I've ever been to in all my life. <gasps> Popcorn on the move. It's showtime. Yeah. <laughs> it's showtime. Oh crap, Lincoln's still banned from Canada. Somebody stop that boat. Oh no, he's not. Liam, you're gonna wanna film this. Prepare yourselves. No, seriously, prepare yourselves. Time to 
shine. And... What the hell was that? Survey says... <laughs> Woof. You're pathetic. Exactly. Well, without a story, I guess this is the end of the road for the Action News team. This is the end! This is the end! Enough! Well, at least they can still be watching the show Everybody Hates Chris. Ugh. Then again, there should be a show called Everybody Hates Chandler. Then again, there could be a show that's like totally spies. Except you got Lenny, Jackie, and Mandy in it. Hmm. Guys, look! It's a ferry ticket and it's timestamp from last night! The culprit must be in the building! Let's go find him! The Action News team is back in business! Right, we can- we can do the pose later. Oh, Stella, never change. Yeah, more or less. Let's get going, Marcy. By the way, I love the final episode of Amphibia. <laughs> Goodbye, Anne. I... I'll never forget you. And I won't forget you either, Sprig. Which means that we'll never be apart. Not really. Oh, look, y'all! A popcorn kernel! Hey, and there's a whole trail of them! Oh, good grits. And I thought Meemaw was a messy eater. Let's pray like hell you don't eat those words, Liam, if your dad was there. Bad dog, copper. You are a very bad dog. The door's locked! Step aside! Liam, you're gonna wanna film this. Oh! Don't worry, Rust. I got it. <laughs> okay, Rusty's constant fails and Liam still recording them is pretty funny. I know I already used this clip before, but it deserves to be played again at this bit. What the hell was that? Survey says... <laughs> Woof. You're pathetic. Exactly. Bingo. I just love Stella. She got a lot more brains than they do. She's like Beverly from the movie It. This is it. Let's do this, guys. I always wanted to say this. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your fucking door down. <laughs> Meryl? You're the one who's been taking all the school's popcorn? I should have known. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just wanted a quiet place to watch my soaps. And nothing soundproofs like popcorn. You know, there's a very place you can actually watch that. It's called Home. Seriously, I mean seriously, I'll be honest with you all, I actually don't mind a lot of the wacky stuff that went down in season 5, like the undercover cherry spies and family bonding, the ghost and ghosted, the hidden treasure in camp, Lenny running for mayor and Alex shunned, the dreamscaping and dream of Lily dream, and even most of the stuff in the Loud House movie. But this is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen from season 5, along with the majority of Blinded by Science and when Lisa brought a dinosaur back to life in School of Shock. And I thought Miss Johnson had problems. Oh, please don't air this, kids. I, I could lose my job. Um, hmm. Let me think. Hmm, is there any good reason why I shouldn't have to do it? I mean, is that so bad? I mean, honestly, if this was Mr. Bolhoffner, I probably would air it. Can't live a lie. We would never do that, Meryl. Even if it means we don't have a story. Which means we don't have a show. Aw, y'all are the sweetest. Wait, I know of another big story that'll save your show. Guess what the people were thinking when they were still working on the animated show of The Loud House. I gave them a stupid idea about how they could save their studio. Bullshit! Bullshit! Years, it's been a legend, but no one's been able to find it. Until now! What in the hell? This is some weird Harry Potter shit I'm seeing. Thanks to an anonymous tip, the Action News team has uncovered the school's secret game room. <laughs> wow, I uh, didn't see that coming. How the fuck was a game room actually behind a locker the entire time? So you're telling me if I rocked right into a porta potty, it's gonna transfer me into another different dimension? <laughs> Bravo! I've been looking for this room for years. Great work, team! And since when they ever install a game room actually inside a school? Nobody plays video games at school. But there has been an actual game room at a community place for the autistic people. In fact, it's kind of like a group center. 
Huh, you think someone would have noticed that before now? Either way, we found the game room. Let's play. You can keep your show! <laughs> now, Meryl, you up for a round of air hockey? You bet your biscuits! Who out there loves air hockey? I do! But I would more likely be playing this game. <laughs> oh, and Zach, I owe you a new tracker. It's all good. I hope she didn't eat that damn thing by accident. Otherwise, Lisa would be back at her old habit again. I just got a new lead on another story. Rumor has it, there's a hot tub in the teacher's lounge. Okay, please let's not oversell this shit in this episode. And I thought the hot tub time machine was pretty stupid. The action news team is on the case. Survey says... This has been Kernel of Truth. Now some can argue with me and say that this was another bland episode with another predictability ending. And it feels less funny and has an uninteresting mystery story. But I could digress about that a little bit. It may feel a little bit bland and a bit predictable, but there was something interesting about this one. Even though most people are not really fans of Clink and McCloud or Lincoln and the Freckle Gang episodes. But this one was not too much hated. It's just Lincoln and his friends trying to find something big and catch some real action for their action team news. And I can say this just ignited Lincoln and the Freckle Gang actually doing something as a group. Nobody was unlikable, nothing didn't anger me so much. In fact, there were a few things I did actually find quite funny. Even if it was one running gag with Zack actually knocking down something every time he's doing the action news pose. And I especially love the part how he was disguised as a fucking bush. And I also did like Stella's interaction with Mr. Bull Hoffner, especially when she confused his age. And even I thought the gag with Zack's mom was pretty fucking hilarious. And even I had one of the major complaints I mentioned in Schooled, for it's somewhat, it felt like Lincoln's friends weren't given enough personality. But in this episode, everybody except Clyde and Zack got a moment. Even though Clyde did have several focus episodes. But with further episodes in the season, we got to actually know Zack, we got to know Liam, and in season 6, we got to know so much with Stella. And for Rusty being in this episode, he's not only actually useful for once, but he's actually really funny in this episode. Even when I gave my conclusion in hand-me-down reviews, when I said I didn't like this character no matter what, somewhat... I'm kind of leaning a little positive on this character a bit. Not entirely, just a little. And with Cheryl's sister, Meryl, somehow I knew she was kind of behind all the corn actually being stolen. Or popcorn, as I might put it. Because didn't it seem too obvious about how grumpy she was in the beginning? And when the delivery guy actually came by to deliver more popcorn, you can actually tell who that was in that hood. And even though in the very ending when Lincoln and the gang actually solved the mystery, somehow Meryl was actually forgiven and didn't get so much of a consequence on this one. But I have to admit, what they did in the very ending was something I never even noticed that was actually inside the middle school locker. Because when seeing this little game room, I'm just saying, I wish I could actually see this in my middle school. So for my personal thought, it's actually a good episode. I wouldn't watch it again, but there are some things I can actually really enjoy with this episode with either... Rusty, Zack, or even Lincoln. So I can give this Lincoln and the Freckle Gang episode a pass. What can you say about this, David? Smile at a crocodile. This episode was fairly okay for the most part. It was the first of the many Lincoln and Friends episodes in season five which I personally find either meh, okay, solid, or pretty good, with the major exception of the train wreck that was no bust, no plus. But back onto the episode itself, although the mystery of who was swapping the school's popcorn was pretty uninteresting, and that Meryl's reasoning for why she did it was completely stupid, the thing that kept me engaged was Lincoln and his friends' interactions and their determination to keep their new show afloat. They definitely carried this episode from beginning to end, and each of them got at least one funny and enjoyable moment. And we later see in episodes such as Broadcast Blues and even Scoop Snoop from Season 6 how much it means to them and how much they're willing to fight for it. 
So while this episode was mostly just okay, it was also a fairly solid start of what we were going to be getting with Lincoln and his friends from season five and for the rest of the show now. Well, not bad, but at least I can respect your opinion about this episode. Now then, we gotta get the show on the road since March is coming soon. This has been Loud House Critic and Greg Griffin, get ready for your special voice appearance in one of these Lola and Lana episodes. In the Loud House, in the Loud House, stuck, dodge, push, and shove, it's how we show our love. In the Loud House, in the Loud House, one boy and ten girls wouldn't trade it for the world. I always get so homesick. Sleeping in someone else's house, on their pillows, smelling their smells.